Welcome to Psy Body Therapy Anatomy Labs. Today we are going to be talking about why ovulation can be painful. I'm gonna be taking you on a little bit of a ride today and this is going to include real images from like sonograms and ultrasounds all the way up kind of culminating in a video that shows the actual process of ovulation in video form. One thing I'd like to address before we go on is that obviously I'm a man. I am a male and I do not experience these things firsthand. However, I do believe that this education is vital, especially given the current climate and lack of education on these topics in the wider world. If you didn't know, a normal monthly cycle is divided in two. There is the follicular stage, which actually starts on the very first day of bleeding. So when your period first starts. And that stage goes all the way to the point of ovulation, which is usually around day 14. After that, all of the body processes move into a support role in preparation for fertilization or to flush that egg cell out of the body when this whole cycle repeats. But what I really want to get to is showing you what this looks like because I feel like a lot of people have not seen it. And so right now we're going to start with a microscope slide and kind of ease into this. Now this is a primordial egg cell or a group of primordial egg cells. This is how everything starts. This is how they are stored in your ovaries right now. And a fun fact about this is that these egg cells, the ones you're carrying around now, were actually formed in utero when you were inside of your mother. So at one point, there were three generations inside of one body. Another aspect of this is understanding the chemicals, the hormones that drive this process. And for that, there's gonna be four of them. There's going to be FSH, which is follicular stimulating hormone, LH, which is luteinizing hormone, both of those are actually produced in the brain. They're released by the pituitary gland. Now, the other two that sort of support and drive this process are going to be estrogen and progesterone. Both of those are going to be produced locally inside the ovary. For our purposes here, and the fact that we're only dealing with the first part, the follicular phase of this cycle, we only have to worry about FSH and LH for now. FSH comes along and starts the progress of these cells into ever larger, more developed, more mature egg cells. FSH does not just stimulate one follicle though, or one primordial egg cell. It stimulates multiple. So any given month, there are between 20 and 40 uh, egg cells that begin that journey toward ovulation. Now we're going to take a look at an ultrasound that is showing these multiple cysts that are now going to be growing or trying to win the race toward ovulation. Here you might be asking, well, what happens to all of those other follicles, all those other cysts, if there's only one egg ovulated each month? Well, these other ones just basically stop. They go through a process called atresia, and that is just cellular death. Eventually they will shrink and they will disappear entirely, and those eggs that were in there are lost forever. So we've arrived at the point of ovulation now. Our cyst is fully ready to go. It is sitting on the ovarian surface or very near the ovarian surface, and it is about to rupture. This is also where I'm going to warn you that a real image is about to come up. These cysts and the resulting rupture of the egg are not small. I think a lot of people are under the misconception that this is a microscopic or a very small process, and it is not. A fully matured graphene follicle can be an inch or more in diameter. It's very large. And this is where the pain comes in. We have to remember that the ovary is a highly vascular and highly innervated structure. And those nerve endings in a lot of people can sense pressure, pain, and all the other sensations that go with what you're seeing here. When I think about this, the really bizarre part is that people don't experience pain with this or that somehow people were, or doctors have been able to write this off as an experience that does not happen. A real quick side lesson. I'd like to address the size of the actual egg cell because I feel like this is another one of those things that people feel like this is not visible to the naked eye or that it's microscopic. And it is quite small. It's only 0.1 millimeters, but that is actually visible to the naked eye. And here is an image of some egg cells that have been separated, kind of teased out and are placed next to a dime. 
Now this screen is a bit of an eye test for you, but there is a single pixel on this screen that is illuminated white. You may have to turn your screen brightness all the way up and make this screen as big as you can, but if you pay close attention, you will actually see the little tiny dot and that is approximately the size of an actual egg cell. If you've gotten this far into the video and you're like, I have never felt that and I have no idea what he's talking about, you may count yourself as one of the lucky ones. It may also be that you've just never known to pay attention to it. This process is going to happen around day 14. So there's actually a window because nothing is perfect in the body. And now that you know this is happening, you may actually be able to track it on a paper tracker. I wouldn't recommend digital trackers in this day and age, but you may actually be able to note that something is happening or there's an odd sensation in your body. And I hope that if you do, that it is not painful, but that it gives you a new appreciation for something you didn't know was going on. A real quick aside, Pain during ovulation is also known as Mittelschmerz. For the people who do experience it, I'm very sorry. And I hope that it is actually a short experience. The average is somewhere between one to six hours, but apparently there are people out there who have an experience that can last for, you know, two or three days. And the reason for that is because the neurology, the nerve wiring of the ovary is going to vary from person to person, as is our individual sensitivity or ability to get that signal to the brain. And then on top of that, you're gonna have an individual pain tolerance. I sincerely hope that you'll use this video or other education that is available online to do some educating for any provider that is telling you that this does not happen. Now I wanna show you an actual video of ovulation occurring. So here you are going to see a cyst on the ovarian surface. Now this is getting ready to split open and rupture and an egg is about to be released. So you're gonna see follicular fluid start to eject there, followed very quickly by the cumulus. I want you to pay special attention to the fact that you can see this rush of blood and all that stuff, and that is trauma. That is where some of that painful sensation and the twinging and all that stuff. And remember, this is an injury to the ovarian surface. Now, once this is kind of hanging out off of the ovary, it is now the job of the fimbriae, that's the, the little finger-like projections at the end of the uterine tube, to kind of sweep over this area and pick that egg cell up and bring it into the uterine tube. I have one more image to show you, and this is going to be the kind of the wound, the trauma that is left after the rupture of an ovarian cyst, a graphene follicle, after it is all done. So here you can see an ovary that is bruised. It almost looks, it looks like someone punched it. And this is the reason that this can hurt so much. And I think now you can kind of understand why it's actually, it's actually more bizarre that more people don't feel it. Chances are, if you're watching videos about ovulation, you may be looking for answers about something that is going on inside your body. And for a select few, that means that you're looking for information on PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And so I would encourage you to head over to this video where I go over this entire condition in very minute detail and also give you information that will help you get better and faster treatment and be a better advocate for yourself.